Hi, I'm Mark Rutten. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. Now today on the 2.4 meter project, we're going to finish building that hatch and then we're going to move on to building a little stanchion that goes between the sub deck and the deck beam. Now, as for the hatch, we're going to be using a very old mechanism. Now, I didn't get this mechanism from any particular source, but it was certainly inspired by the kind of things you'll find in books like this that have all sorts of details about making wooden latches for doors and windows and things like that. And so using that inspiration, I created a hidden latching mechanism for our hatch cover. And that's gonna allow us to basically have a nice smooth unbroken deck. You don't need any fasteners or any tools to be able to put that deck hatch in or take it out. And it's just gonna pop in there and be nice and flush and uh, reasonably secure. So without further ado, let's go get to work. Okay, I'm just playing around with an idea for a, uh, a pin that will release this hatch cover. We were going to use some uh, little door stops at first but my client would prefer something that's a little more positive positive. and I was playing around with this idea using some polycarbonate but it, the polycarbonate just had no life to it. It felt like it was just going to slowly kind of give up in a short amount of time. So I came up with this. This is idea which is a really old idea actually. You see these on door latches going back through history hundreds of years just using a wooden spring and so I've got this idea of just using a, a, a bolt as a pin. And then we run a string back here to the cockpit. Okay, so I do one on either side. I just need to fasten that string in there and have a little loop you can grab onto. And just give a little pull. And you only have to go pull it a short amount of distance, you know, it's only like a quarter inch here. And then our pin pops free. Obviously, the, uh, this will go into a little hole or a slot in the frame of the other of the hatch itself. And I think uh, this seems like a really good, simple, secure way to go. We'll fasten this in place with a couple of handhead screws. So it'll be a good, secure fit, I think. And if this ever breaks or wears out, uh, you know, you, all you got to do is you got to get in there with a screwdriver to unscrew them, that might be the toughest part, and um, replace it. But this feels like it's just about right, you know? I might even just use this very piece of ash I've got here, because it feels like it's got the right spring to it. Little success, I suppose, hopefully. We need something in here for the main sheet to grab onto. Of course, my client comes up with this uh, request after the deck is closed in, it would have been nice if I knew about it ahead of time. He said he wanted to be able to fasten it in here. Well, there's a limited amount of structure in here at this point, so we're going to have to create some structure. So I'll put a nice little piece of blocking on here to help bond to our sub deck, but then I'm going to carry a load through. So I've got some of this plywood scrap, and I'm just going to make a little bit of blocking that sort of a, a web that is going to connect from that deck to this deck beam and of course that carries through to the deck proper and so at the very least if he fastens, wants to fasten to the deck there's something to carrying it down to give it more structure down here or he could fasten go through the deck and fasten straight to this which is probably the best idea so I've got some glassed over 180 inch ply here I'm just going to double this up and run one piece across the no, here, I'll do this right now one piece is going to attach to the face of this deck beam. The other piece will go underneath the deck beam, glue them all together, and then I'll have a quarter inch of plywood with glass on both sides of it. So that'll be a really nice, strong little piece of material, very lightweight. And then we'll make some blocking that is glued into that just helps carry that load around onto this deck a little further. We've got a little plate that we'll um, fasten probably a little strap to. And then some blocks that are going to capture that plate in here. I'm actually going to double up the plate in a second piece here. Then those pieces are glassed on the outside. So it'll be a nice strong little part. And a couple blocks to just make sure it's all glued well down to the deck. And since this is an ingrain joint, I gave these a few uh, scores with a chisel just to make sure that this is well keyed together. I discovered my quadrant just catches the edge of this. A little bit when you um, it swings all the way over. So I'm just going to chop a little piece out of this strut. It's going to be perfectly strong without a little without a bit missing. 
Got a little backing block on the back side to prevent breakout, of course. Same thing on the other side here. So if I use this, I gave myself a line that's sort of my termination point. And uh, another line for a center foot. So with those. Start giving myself a little pilot hole to follow. The Forstner bits have got this sort of kind of a dull spur on them center spur, so you, it re really helps to give them a, a pilot hole to follow. Just like so, plant my back and block in place. clean up here just to take these sharp edges off, stuff like that. I just want to thank all my followers on Patreon whose monthly pledges help support this channel, but I also want to thank everybody else who watches these videos, who shares them, likes them, and subscribes to the channel. You all help to promote this thing that we're doing, and I really appreciate all of you. Now I just want to drill for my pins here. Let's start by lining these guys up. I'll just flag that. That's probably pretty good right there. Okay, this is sort of a mock-up of my hatch. I got one of my one of my uh, catches in place, and so it just works like this. Boom! Just got a couple temporary pins into the back here, and I've inserted some brass liners to my holes here so that things go smoothly. So these just drop into place, and my uh, these sticks on top represent the lid here to make sure that it's going to work. So they just drop in there, and then, boom, it just drops into place like that. That works pretty good, and we'll have to come up with something to do with, to keep it from rattling around. Maybe, I'm thinking that it might just be a couple little felt dots, like um, cabinet door bumpers, that just give it just a tiny bit of positive tension. We'll see. But anyway, I'm, I'm quite happy with how this, this turned out, actually. I think this is a... Pretty good solution, super simple, no complicated hardware to replace in the long run. Worst case scenario is this piece of ash breaks or stops springing, you could all just make another one easily enough. Just gotta reach underneath and unscrew it, which is kind of a pain, but doable. All right, so now I think I am free to harness this deck. And I've got some little got some little brass liners that I still have to pop into these holes. I wanted to check that it would work with the way it was before I pop these in in case I needed to enlarge them. So these are just brass tubing and I use a little flaring tool to flare them out a little bit. So I'll just use a drop of 
cyanoacrylate on those guys and just hammer them in. Makes for a nice neat finish. I'm just about ready to start my decking. And one thing I need to do is do the last little bit of fairing on this hatch frame here. And to do that, I want it fixed in place with the same fasteners that will hold it, or like the catch mechanism. So I don't have to put the whole catch mechanism in, but I need, do need part of it. And so I've made up some little pins here by taking a, just a, a regular bronze screw and chopped the head off of it and then rounded over the end and slotted it. So I got a little slot there. And I've already also chopped them a little bit shorter. And uh, the goal there is just to have like a little stud sticking out. And I just don't have any like rod material to glue in. So I thought this was a good solution. My slot has got a pretty minimal little bit of grab. So I'm gonna use a regular screw here to just almost like tapping the hole. So I'm just screwing this in all the way because I can't don't have the, the same kind of force that I, do with the little slotted screwdriver. So this is kind of like pre-threading the hole. And when, once that's done, I can just gently find those threads with my fingers there, get it started, and then when I run out of torque on my fingers, then I'll switch to the screwdriver and I'll just gently try and run that in until my threads disappear. That's my goal. There we go. Same thing with the other end. I've already pre-threaded that one. So a little grab on, oh boy, it doesn't feel like I pre-threaded it, but I know I did. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because I'm gonna have to force it too much. I think my pins are deep enough. Just drop those in. Nice. Okay, that works. And now I just got some, some of my machine screws that are gonna be my pins for the Hatch mechanism, so I'll just pop those through. And there we go. That's my finished hatch arrangement. Honestly, it's pretty good. I feel it's just a little high over here. Just want to tweak that down. That's my only thing here. Boy, that's an ugly sound. goal here is just to go over this aft section just make sure we're properly fared in and then I'm going to start decking the back end here and I'll work my way forward. Yeah I've mixed up some epoxy to like a jam consistency as we call it. I wetted out my frame. I'm just going to paint on what I think is just about the right amount. Now I can't do much in terms of cleaning up on this uh, because it's got to have to just bond itself in place with weights on top and I can't touch it until it's, the epoxy is cured, so, which means I'll be doing some cleanup afterwards. And because I've already epoxied the inside of this hatch cover, I don't really want to use a heat gun on there because that's going to lift epoxy off of it and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to try and find the you know, sort of a reasonable amount to actually make this gluing job happen.
cleanly. Without starving the joint. I don't want the whole pile to squeeze out all over the place because of course it's going to squeeze out into the joint between the frame and the opening as well as to the inside so that's not good. And I should mention that I've already taken packing tape and taped off the whole opening around the outside of the frame here so any epoxy that does squeeze past the frame is just going to hit the tape and won't stick. And the worst case scenario is if I'm worried about my glue joint, once I take the frame off of here, I can run a fillet around the inside and that will bond it all together quite nicely. I could also just even use some staples um, between the frame itself and the, uh, and the panel because they'll be buried. I don't want to do that right away because of... Uh, I could do that. It's not something I'd really thought about actually till this very moment. Yeah, we'll just go with weights. Weights would be fine. Although if I'm getting impatient about waiting, <laughs> I might just um, staple it down so that I can pull this out and uh, work on some other stuff, but I think I'll just wait for it to sort of set up a fair bit before I consider doing that. I'll wait till like the epoxy has sort of hit its um, sort of semi-cured state, at which point it starts to become structural to a degree. At least it's become, it's uh, structural in that it stiffens up and it's not going anywhere, but I mean, you wouldn't want to put any sort of real stress on it. All right, here we go. So I've sanded the inside of this and I wiped it down with alcohol. And I decided to just butt this up tight because I want to be able to sort of tweak it a little bit and if it's too far away I don't have that room to tweak it. Probably add more weights around the edge actually. Maybe I'll see if I can't squeeze in an extra couple since I've got them. And the only other thing I can do is I can squeeze. I forgot. I hadn't even thought about this. Man, it's amazing how you. Your brain can run on tracks sometimes. I hadn't even considered putting spring clamps on these corners where I can reach them, which is pretty dumb of me. Okay, here we are. It's been 24 hours, and it's time for us to see if this will come out. And fingers crossed here. This is going to be, uh, what's going on? Okay. I put slightly oversized bolts into here because I wanted it to snug down as far as possible. Come on, why aren't you coming out? You should be coming out very easily. For some reason this one's slightly misaligned. I'm not worried about it because the, the pin that goes into it is going to be a number 8 and that's a number 10 I've thrown in there right now. Come on. Oh yeah, a little, little epoxy squeeze out, I think. Okay, moment of, moment of truth. <laughs> yes. Yes. Looks pretty good. I got a little...
couple little spots here that are not totally filled. So I think I'll clean that up and maybe I'll just run a really small fillet around there or I'll just squeeze a little epoxy into the joint. One of those two. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll mull that over while I move on to the next job. So that makes me super happy. Um, Don't ever want to leave packing tape on very long. This stuff likes to become permanent very easily. Masking tape you can get away with for a little while depending on the variety, but packing tape, get it off as soon as possible. I almost, I kind of prefer using the brown stuff if I can find it just because I can see it. <laughs> I find it a little uh, annoying when I can't, when this, this stuff is so invisible that it's hard to sneak it out every little bit. It tends to tear away in an awkward manner sometimes. Okay. That looks good. That looks good. All right. Boy, I'm so glad that worked out well. That sort of held its shape nicely. That's good. It's not springing up. So before I put the deck on, I want to fasten this little strap in place that's going to hold a shiv. That's going to allow uh, the uh, main sheet to come down through some rollers here to a little tiny block and then it takes a turn and heads into the cockpit. Theory, one half goes on that pad at the bottom, the other half goes on the little upright. Okay, so with this idea, we'll tweak it a little bit more, but we would go like that. And as we want this as low as possible, so I lose that. I think I might have to try this with a different piece of hardware, or maybe I should make my own. I'm not too sure about that. But that's the kind of idea I'm thinking about there. But if we can reduce it down by half that distance, that would be even better. Okay, well, I took a little bit of messing around, but I managed to make a little bracket. So there's the bracket I modified, but it sits too far up in the air. We don't have a lot of space to work with. So I made one that sits down considerably lower actually formed it entirely by hand. I suppose I, <laughs> I hadn't even thought about actually just chopping one of these down and altering it some more. That would have been another way to go. Anyhow, it's done now, so it doesn't really matter. I think that's going to work out really nicely. Okay, so ready to put this in. Okay, so this one's going to get a bolt, that one will get a screw. I'm just going to drill this as a pilot hole, then I'll follow it up with a bigger bit. I'm just going to use some cyanoacrylate actually to seal this hole. And uh, a little cyanoacrylate into this here too, just to seal up the grain. I don't usually use cyanoacrylate for this, but this seems like actually a pretty good use for it.
go. That's a nice solid connection right there. That feels really good. Nice big truss headed screw. Now I just need a bolt to go onto there. And the last thing we do here is I just take a center punch, get in here and just try and knock a thread back into the nut and that acts like a, like a lock washer. There we go. And that'll just prevent it from being able to jiggle free. Even if it loosens up a hair, that, that'll stop the nut from walking its way off and that gives us sort of an extra measure of security. That looks pretty darn good. I'm happy about that. I wish I could have curled these over a little bit more, but I just didn't have the tools to pull that off. Maybe I should have tried putting that in the vise and squeezing it, but a little late for that now. I'm not going to worry about it. It's about the same as any of the other straps that, we've, that I was playing around with, so I'm happy about that. Okay, I have uh, been playing around with the latch mechanism here before I put anything else on and uh, got it working pretty good. That's all it takes. Just yank on this string a little, pull these back a quarter inch. I think I gotta trim this, shave this one down just a hair, put the file onto it. Not bad. My threads are giving me a little bit of friction on these bolts though, so I think I need to do a little bit of filing just to knock those threads back a bit just so it's a little smoother but otherwise it works pretty good let's just try it with the lid so if we drop the lid into place back end is in there and we go Can't complain about that Okay, so there we go. This is all, this is it. That sort of refined. I kind of wish I'd made those from scratch. I might even still do that before I'm done. But this is working great. It just drops into place there. Drops down. Pull the string. It's really nice and secure. Not going anywhere. It'd be nice if this was it's got a little bit of wiggle room, but it has to in order for the latch to align properly. This isn't uh, high engineering here, but um, I think it's, it shouldn't rattle too much. It feels fairly snug. And then it just lifts out really easily. That's great. So I'm super happy about that. I'll take these off for gluing the deck on, but then we'll put them back. Uh, afterwards and I'll probably use some washers on these screws holding them in place. Fantastic. That makes me super happy. I'm really happy how this latch mechanism worked out. I mean uh, I had played around with all kinds of other sort of bits of hardware that we could have bought and tried using but none of them were nearly as satisfying as making this particular mechanism. Now the mechanism itself it works okay. Um, it could be a little bit smoother and down the road, if it was really problematic, we could start from scratch and sort of reconstruct it, I think, and make it a little bit better than it actually is. But for the time invested, I think it works really quite nicely. It certainly solves the problem of keeping that hatch reasonably secured without having to use tools to put it in or take it out. And I think it looks pretty cool. So, ciao for now, folks. We'll catch you on the next video. Now remember, if the women don't find you handsome, Maybe you need a better barber.